Um, as like I said, Michael Connell, I'm the director of Fleet for Frito. I've been with Frito for 20 years. I'll go through a little bit about the company. Gino Porter joined us. Uh, he's our region fleet manager for this geography and is you know, an integral part of our strategy, as you'll see, the implementation of the fleet across the organization. So let me get right into it. Um, as, as you may or may not know, we've got a whole bunch of brands out there. Our parent company is PepsiCo, so um, we you know, have a very, very large fleet organization, and then the Frigo side of it is a majority of our own, uh, what we call PSD, direct store delivery. So we make, move, and distribute all our products ourselves across the entire organization, which makes it very complex, and I'll show you a little bit about that from a fleet perspective. So those are the trucks you'll see. Um, out of the road at your stores each and every day delivering to the supermarkets, the convenience stores, the gas stations, etc. The top one is a, an old traditional route truck. And then we've got uh, a bunch of medium duty box trucks, which will become important later from our electric strategy. We've got a whole host of tractor trailers as well. Um, and that's mainly internal distribution from our manufacturing plants. We have um, 38 manufacturing facilities across the U.S. and about uh, 200 distribution centers, but thousands of distribution points, and I'll show you that. And then we've got a uh, company car program. We do have an all Prius company car program against, uh, across all of PepsiCo. Those we have about 1,100 within Frito. Um, and then I have service trucks for maintenance. So we do a majority of our maintenance operations in-house as well, which also has helped us from an alternate fuel standpoint because we can. Um, some of the smaller startup companies don't have the capability from a server, service dealer network, and we're able to uh, do that ourselves. So that's a profile of our fleet. We, from a PepsiCo standpoint, for private fleets, we are in the top five. If you separate Frito out, we are the number seventh or eighth largest private fleet in the United States. And I would challenge, it's extremely complex, as you saw, too. It's not just all class eight. It's all vehicles from automotive, as you saw, with over a thousand company cars to um, you know the class A tractor trailers across the entire fleet. So there's not one solution that fits all. So we study a whole bunch of, uh, of the marketplace. That's our distribution network. Um, pretty straightforward. It's um, we have, um, as you can imagine, from you know we talk about having our snacks within arm's reach, and we have bin facilities, distribution centers. So the large metro areas like LA have large distribution centers, but we have a lot of what we call small bin facilities across the U.S. There's over 2,000 points of distribution. Um, so needless to say, we burn a lot of fuel, we run a lot of miles, and we have some pretty aggressive targets and goals as an organization around all that. So that's a little bit about the background. Let's talk about sustainability. We've really been on this journey for over 10 plus years, but it's been focused mainly on the manufacturing side. So we have a very rich history around natural gas, water, and electricity, and I'll show a little bit about that. Uh, we have solar fields in Modesto, California. You've probably seen the ads where we're, you know, we're making sun chips with solar power. Uh, we've got a turbine in Killingly, Connecticut, natural gas turbine that's generating, uh, I think it's a two kilowatt uh, cogen co system. Co system. So all the steam for the plant associated with that. So we've done a lot of work. About three years ago, we really started to get serious about our fleet, saying, you know, we've got to really, you know, start to work on something as, as everybody did when fuel got to four dollars a gallon, and the complexity out there, as well as as you start to look at your entire greenhouse gas footprint as an organization, it became apparent. But this is our, you know, broader goals: is you know, how can we impact or, or lessen our impact across the entire organization? Um, and we've done a lot from our packaging materials all the way through our fleet. And we'll talk more about that. So. Uh, what is our fleet from a greenhouse gas profile? It is one third of our carbon footprint. That was a big aha. You know, we haven't been working from a fleet perspective. Um, it was almost like a necessary evil. Our CFO always said he wishes we, you know, we're a snacking manufacturer. We're not a distribution company, right? And we have this unnecessary evil of having trucks. Um, we got pretty serious about it, saying, well, that, you know, that's a fact of life. It is a competitive advantage for us to be a direct store distribution network. Um, so let's let's. You know, do a lot strategically around our fleet. We started to really get in, in deep around that. So you see some of our vehicles up there. But when you go across our entire profile, so you've got manufacturing, which you think, wow, we make a lot of snack foods. It's a third of our footprint based on the work we've done. And then our fleet's a third. And then you've got facilities and all other support and headquarters throughout. And we really have built um, strategic components across all these areas in our, in our operations. 
So we do this a lot at Frigo. Um, I work for the Senior Vice President of Sustainability and Productivity. And that is very purposeful in nature because we are obviously a public company and we're, we don't do things just to be green. Uh, we have a rich history of investing and figuring out how to make investments work and pay back because we have scale. Um, and we, we have a lot of resources, both financially and engineering and capability-wise. So we set some pretty aggressive goals. So these are some actual performance number. If you go back to 1999 baseline, I told you earlier, we have kind of this 10-year history uh, around water, natural gas, and electricity. And that's our reduction, so significant improvements in there. I mean, you can go on and on. If any of you have an interest, I can get you in contact with our director of sustainability for manufacturing. But there's a whole host of stuff we've done across our facilities around that. And then three years ago, we picked up on this fuel stuff and started saying we've got to do something different. Um, the great news is, I will tell you, we beat our numbers every year over the last three years. We are extremely excited about our electric truck program. We'll, we'll break through 10%, so we'll end the year at 2010 with a 5% reduction year over year in fuel this year, and that'll put us on glide path to be sub 10, and our goal by 2020 is to be 50% reduced. Yes, sir? Could you just quickly explain the horizontal lines, those targets, could you just quickly say what those are? The horizontal lines on your graph? Yeah, well, we got 1999 through 2009, and this is uh, uh, percentage reduction on its pounds produced. It depends on the kilowatt per pound, uh, you got uh, gallons per pound, BTUs per pound conversion on that. So that's across all of manufacturing, all of our, our basically, you know, uh, natural resources for production. Thank you. Make sense? And then fuel. Um, so we, we, you know, we burn a lot of fuel across our fleet. We have a glide path. We built a model and we have a glide path to 50% reduction um, between now and 2020 with technology we know about today at a flat investment rate from a capital standpoint. Now. Like anything, we're leveraging the partnerships with the Department of Energy, Clean Cities Coalitions, and everybody else. But we only do that if we see a glide path to a, um, a, a, an economic solution with a product that is free of any grant support money, and we do see that with electric. So, uh, as you can imagine, there's a whole host of reasons on why we need to do this from a corporate <coughs> standpoint um, as well. So, fuels are uh, more and more critical. I think there's not one solution. You'll see why that's important for us as an organization to consider your study it, but it affects all of us, both you know, as individuals. Our employees are highly engaged in our strategy, uh, what they can do as individuals, what they can do as part of the organization, um, and we really are focused across all the elements that are out there, and we have an engineering team that continues to study it, leverage OEs, um, you know, what's next, and uh, you know, we've partnered with a lot of big fleets out there on this work. So let's talk specifically from a fleet strategy, what we've been working on. We continue to study, pilot, and implement what we can, where we can, organizationally to hit those goals. Um, you know, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen out there that are trying to sell you the next best additive or whatever. Uh, we have a screening process to, to kind of control that, and we'll only implement some of the stuff that just doesn't work in our drive cycle. We did a, uh, we, we built, and we got a, our CEO of PepsiCo had us write a letter and wanted to understand why Frito Lay is not doing hybrid when Pepsi bottling was, and frankly, all the other big fleets out there were doing hybrid. We did a two truck test with hybrid. We have lightweight products, and we don't stop and start enough in regenerative braking technology, so we didn't invest. We said we've got to wait till the next generation technology comes out, or we've got to find a more fuel efficient engine. We actually went with a um, sprinter chassis on our route trucks, which doubled our fuel economy in traditional combustion, so mm -hmm. significant improvements, but we, we couldn't afford the hybrid platform, we didn't get the benefit out of it. So we really, as an organization, have looked for how do you figure out a win-win, both economically um, and from an environmental standpoint, and it, the solutions are out there, it's just what the right fit is. We believe hybrid will be a solution for us, but it's gotta be plug-in for us. Regenerative braking does not give us the benefit in our drive cycles. It's all about drive cycles and use. So you can see some of the stuff very much at the bottom. I'll hit a couple. Um, so that's one our electric trucks, similar to Staples. Uh, there's the Sprinter uh, high efficiency route truck. We doubled our fuel efficiency by just buying that chassis. Now there was an investment associated with that, um, but it's significant. The clean diesel technology on the Sprinter versus um, some of the other products that are out there was a significant improvement both in reliability and performance. A lot of aerodynamic projects, we are um, in the midst of rolling out GPS nationally on our entire fleet. We had a pilot of about 5,000 vehicles. 
we are going national, so I will have visibility to every asset across the entire organization by the end of 2011 across all class eight and uh, smaller vehicles. It's a big win. It's focused on idle performance, but there's a tremendous amount of opportunity beyond that um, that we continue to learn about. Here's why the mix is important. So this is uh, real quick on the left, the 50,000 miles all the way down to five. So I've got every rod that you can imagine based on our distribution network, based on how many stores are in the local geography. So I literally have trucks that'll go out and return in with 20 miles on them a day. And I have other trucks that'll go out 100 miles or 200 miles in rural areas. So there isn't one solution that fits all. And we continue to prepare our organization. Everybody wants state, you know, quote unquote, the Southwest model. They want one truck, all my mechanics want one truck, all the drivers want one truck. Why do you have to add so much complexity, right? You have to. So my pushback to my organization is we have to prepare our employees to be well-educated leaders in the industry, leaders capability-wise from a technical standpoint, to be able to deal with anything that's out there. Because one, we don't really know what the solution is, and two, with those kind of drive cycles, I can't have one truck that fits all, right? I need that line to be straight across to make that work, and it's never going to be that way in our network. So again, this is kind of a picture of what our future fleet would look like, all the way from a plug-in hybrid, the high efficiency uh, diesel engine, even better than where we're at today, um, better <coughs> propanes, we're converting uh, propane tests electric, both route truck, that one in the middle may look familiar to you, that one outside isn't exactly the same modec, the Smith electric, and then we will still have combustion engine, but you know, um, what it entails and how much. I think in the future it'll be an electric powertrain with range extension versus a full electric combustion powertrain. Or, uh, combustion powertrain. But anyway, just to give you a picture of what we're trying to do. So electric, um, we uh, have committed to, we have 21 vehicles we're putting in place now. We have five in New York, six in Canada. Next week in Columbus, Ohio, we'll have five in Texas, five. That's what we're calling our pilot program. We've actually made a commitment for 155 additional units under this DOE program with Smith Electric, um, and we're rolling those out right after. So we're calling it you know, kind of an extended pilot. Um, so we'll have 176 all electric route delivery trucks by you know mid next year. We will have the largest all electric fleet in the U.S. from a private fleet standpoint at this point. Um, and we're you know from California to you know we're going to put them all over where it makes sense. There's a lot of factors you heard about today, so we're doing site surveys to find out if you know how much infrastructure is needed. Um, some of our sites, we can put trucks in there tomorrow, put charging stations in and have no problem. Other sites, if I put one truck in there, I'll probably take down the block. So um, it is it is critical. We were in some of the earlier discussions around that. So what you know alternates can we do? We have a strategy in Casa Grande, Arizona, where we're trying to take the plant almost completely off the grid. So we have solar fields, we have a biomass boiler, uh, we have uh, um, membrane bioreactor for recycled water. So we're going to try to take the plant as much off the grid for water, electric, natural gas as possible. And we're going to put a fleet of, of potentially um, all, all electric and some uh, CNG equipment up there as well. And it's our Petri dish for plants. And then we're going to take what applies economically across the rest of the organization, the plants and all the local sites and local teams are building their own strategy um, that works. Because again, in Aberdeen, Maryland, where we're water restricted, a membrane bioreactor makes a lot of sense. In you know Canada, solar fields is probably not going to be the place to put them. In, you know, versus Arizona. So each of our region teams and site teams are building local sustainability strategies to best work both their fleet and manufacturing processes. So those are some of the, the vehicles. The Canadian version out there already. The top version is the box truck. And again, we're talking to Modec here on solutions for a route delivery, a smaller delivery vehicle. But at this point, we've not made any commitments on that asset class. So the 176 vehicles will be the medium duty box trucks at this point. It works very well in our dry cycle. And as you can see, a tremendous improvement in cost and greenhouse gas impact. So I talked to you about a 50% improvement. This is where we're at today. We've built a model across all of our assets to say how could it evolve and what would it look like. And these are kind of the numbers. So by 2015, we believe we can reduce 34% of our fuel usage, um, optimize over half our fleet. And then by 2020, with the future technology that's out there, we can achieve our goals. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.